All right, this is fun. My name is Matthew Mead, and I am the founder of Hempitecture. We are a company focused on what we believe is the most sustainable building material on Earth. The story of this project begins with a very unlikely team. First, we have a grandmother who is determined to leave a legacy for a better world, and then myself, a youthfully optimistic entrepreneur and builder who wants to inspire a change in our built environment. This unexpected partnership is just a small portion of what makes this project that I'm about to talk about tonight so unique. And in fact, one of the most significant of its kind in the United States. In the winter of 2016, I received an unexpected phone call from Ms. Pam Bosch, the soon-to-be client and homeowner of the Highland Hemp House. I had actually known about Ms. Pam Bosch already because she was featured in a National Geographic story online about her tiny house in Bellingham, Washington. And she's pictured here holding a ball of hempcrete. This National Geographic article talked about how hempcrete may very well be the next best building material to come out. And on that first phone call that we talked over, she expressed her vision for building a hempcrete home in Bellingham that would set the bar for what hempcrete could do as a building material. We were ready and excited to take on the challenge. So first, before we talk about this project, we gotta get it out of the way. What the heck is hempcrete? Hempcrete, in the simplest sense, is an insulating, breathable, and fireproof biocomposite that's derived from three natural ingredients. First, you have the wooden core of the industrial hemp stock. Second, you have a limestone-based binder. And third, water. When we combine these things together in a very specific proportion, what happens is pretty magical. A carbonation reaction occurs that seeks carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and absorbs it and solidifies it into the composite. One cubic foot of hempcrete is estimated to absorb around seven pounds of carbon dioxide. The material doesn't off-gas, it has no toxins, it's a humidity regulator, and it's entirely breathable. But my fascination with hempcrete began long before this chance phone call. We had just finished our first hempcrete building project in Idaho, which actually is the first commercial hempcrete building in the United States. When I was studying architecture as an undergrad, I became really fascinated with natural building materials, straw bale, cob, rammed earth, all these different strategies, but they all presented their own limitations. For me, uh, it seemed that you know it was uh, a material that we really needed to look at more, and I wondered, why are we not using this material more often? I did more research, and across the UK and in France, there's thousands of hempcrete buildings. So why aren't we using it in the United States? Well, my research showed that industrial hemp was made illegal in 1937. This antiquated legislation fueled my fire, and as an undergraduate college student, I was determined to make hempcrete my pathway forwards. So here I was talking to Ms. Pam Bosch, and we had our work cut out for us. We saw these architectural plans, and to be honest, it dwarfed the size of the building that we had just built. This building, not only bigger in footprint, but also three stories high, uh, was going to be a challenge. I arrived in Bellingham with my framing tools to work with some local contractors to frame this building. And I remember the day that we finished all the roof rafters and put, some, put up some of the subfacia, and I stepped back, and I said to myself, what have I gotten myself into? I learned a lot from the first hempcrete project that I did, but the major takeaway was that hempcrete installation can be incredibly labor intensive. The idea of mixing, moving thousands of pounds of hempcrete material from the first floor upwards to the third floor kept me up at night. As a non-structural material, it all has to be cast around a structural frame. So first the hemp, the lime, the water, it's all mixed together. Then it has to be transported into the wall. Conventionally, this is where it's really labor intensive, getting things from point A to point B. With a project this size, I knew that we couldn't just do the you know, bucket brigade style of building where we're bringing thousands of buckets and pouring them into the wall. It was just gonna be far too labor intensive. 
I looked at different uh, countries and how they were installing hempcrete, and I saw that in Europe they're using spray machines similar to shotcrete, but what that does is it actually lowers the R value, which would have brought this to below code for the Bellingham area. So I realized that we're going to have to try an innovative, unique method and apply a systems thinking approach. So when we talk about a systems thinking approach from a construction perspective, we're thinking about how all members of the system can work together for maximum efficiency. It's not just about the tools and the methods, but it's about how the team works together to operate the equipment to achieve productive results. What we found at the Highland Hemp House was really exciting. For the first two weeks, we did a baseline study where we did the traditional method, the bucket brigade style, as I alluded to before. After two weeks of tracking our progress and doing it the old way, we were ready to implement our new approach. <laughs> Using a series of conveyor belts, we developed a system that would allow the hempcrete mixture to essentially be automatically dispensed into the wall. We built a rack that allowed the conveyor belt to pivot, move, swivel, and adjust height-wise to go right over our form boards and move the material into our wall. Early on, it became pretty clear that we were onto something as our productivity picked up more than 50%. As we gained an elevation in the house, the assumption was that our speed would go down. But what we found was actually quite the opposite. For us, this was great news because this meant to us that the labor-intensive nature of hempcrete building that often requires free and workshop labor could actually be seen to become more comparable to conventional building timelines. Not only that, but the homeowner was very happy, which is always a good thing. I'm not making an argument that systems thinking and technology is new in construction, but what I'm saying is that we don't really know what's possible until we try, so we can't just rule it out. Natural building is often viewed as far distant from innovation and technology. When we bring the two together, we can enable natural building to be more efficient, effective, and therefore, more accessible and scalable. When we step back and we look at the bigger picture, we can better understand the undertaking that this project was. We used approximately 12,000 pounds of hemp herd, nearly 23,000 pounds of lime binder, totaling around 35,000 pounds of mixed hempcrete. Every batch that we produced, which uh, equates to about three cubic feet, had to be mixed and then placed into the wall. All in all, it took about 1,500 man hours, which, yeah, it sounds like a lot, but considering where we started, it was a great improvement because it could have taken twice as long. This project is estimated to uh, have absorbed over 15,000 pounds of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. With hempcrete construction so new, still in the United States, there are a lot of hurdles to overcome, permitting being one of them. The Highland Hemp House is a testament to overcoming some of those hurdles and building something that's unique, innovative, natural, and spectacular through teamwork. Mechanizing the processes and applying technology to natural building is a direction that, as a company, we're gonna continue to work on so that we can scale this, so that more hempcrete buildings can be built but everyone here can play a part. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, a seasoned architect or just a student. We all know the impact that the built environment has on our world. That's why we're here tonight, to learn about new ideas and better ways of doing things. I urge you to tell someone about Hempcrete, to share this project and to embrace the idea of trying new things, even if it sounds crazy at first. Now is the time that we have to break away from the norm. We've all seen that negative impact that the business as usual in construction has, and we can't afford to preserve the inefficient building methods of yesterday to the detriment of a more sustainable and better tomorrow. There are different and better ways of doing the same thing. Tonight, we're here to say that natural building is a sustainable pathway forwards towards addressing the impact of our built environment and the Highland Hemp House represents that. We're here to say that technology can enable success and bring us closer to scalable solutions, redefining our ideas of how things can and should be done. 
Lastly, we're here to say that unlikely partnerships and cross-generational thinking can yield results that can build a better world. Thank you.